Sokka panted beside the firebender. Not a firebender now, as they ran. Zuko was starting to fall behind, endurance lacking after his time in the cave, but Sokka didn't hang back for him. They had to get to Game Pie, stop that little sister charming murderer from killing an entire town of people. Any seriously disturbing, bending-related revelations would have to wait until after that. No matter how sick it made Sokka to think about, he wasn't a bender, but he couldn't think of a single day that Katara hadn't bent at least once. It was so important to her, a part of who she was, a part of her identity. He tried to picture her without her bending, with her bending being taken from her, and felt... he felt sick. Therefore, there would have to be future Sokka's problem, because hopefully... Future Sokka wouldn't have an entire town to save. The town's guardsmen straightened when Sokka burst out of the woods. They were obviously there as precaution, not guards that actually expected an attack as they scrambled to grab their weapons. And Sokka was glad they had a clearly Fire Nation teenager stumbling out of the woods behind him to give valid to a stranger's claim. As it was, with both Zuko and Sokka there to reveal Jet's plan, reveal the very real danger to the quaint little village, the guards were quick to listen and quicker to call other soldiers over to begin evacuating the town. Soon there were dozens of uniformed men running behind and alongside Sokka and Zuko, working to pull people out of homes, shops, and parks, and pushing them up the steep inclines that framed their valley. Children cried as well as toys. Coats and shoes fell and were trampled, never to be retrieved by their fleeing owners. Panic and fear filled the streets. However, by the time the explosion sounded... Large and loud enough to be clearly heard by the screaming citizens, every single person from the town was safe on the banks to watch their homes be destroyed. Zuko gasped beside Sokka, both of them avoiding the leader of the town as he sought them to ask questions. Sokka side-eyed the other team. So, I know why I'm avoiding Mr. Tall, fiery, and angry, but... Zuko scowled, in what was rapidly becoming a very familiar expression. I gave my word that I wouldn't set anyone on the Freedom Fighters. If I tell them what they did to me... Sokka glanced pointedly at the sight of a little girl pulling a soaked doll out of the water. I'm pretty sure they have plenty of reasons to go after them without you. He moved away from the gathering people, stepped into the shelter of the woods. Zuko scowled harder and followed. I gave my word. Okay... Well, really, I don't actually... Sokka was interrupted when Appa moaned, having been startled from his earlier hiding place by the sound of the explosion. Oh, hi, buddy! He yelled as Zuko cursed and stumbled back several paces. He watched the large beast with wide eyes while Sokka scratched his head and accepted licks from his tongue longer than him. Momo jumped out of the saddle and glided over to land on Zuko's knee. The Fire Nation team cursed again and Crab walked away, which was extremely ineffective as Momo was perched on him. Sokka figured the kid had been having a pretty big day. He could give him a break. Momo! He called to the lemur as he climbed onto Appa's head, and Momo jumped off his new friend and curled around Sokka's shoulders. He glanced at Zuko. The older teen looked so small from up there. Bruises stuck out starkly on the pale skin skin which had a sickly tint to it in the sunlight that had been hidden in the yellow torchlight. His hair was thin and clumpy, and blood started to drip down from the mess of a manacle and chain around his wrist. His clothes were shabby and torn and stained, but he hadn't told anyone what had happened to him, because he'd given his word. A word that Sokka definitely hadn't asked for, by the way. Well, his instincts had never led him astray before. Hey, hop on. What? If you want, I'm going to go find my sister and Aang, and then we'll be leaving behind this place. So fast, if you blink, you won't see it behind you. You want me to get on that thing? Appa moaned. It's a sky bison. Those are extinct! They haven't been seen since the after was still around. Sokka snorted. Have you been living under a rock? The avatar... Oh, wow. That was probably the most insensitive thing anyone could have said right now, isn't it? Katara would have frozen me to a wall for that one. Zuko snorted, but something in that speech seemed to convince him. 
He made his way over and hesitantly began climbing onto the bison. Suck a small back of the skittish team, feeling some kind of vindication when Momo jumped from his shoulder to curl in the other boy's lap. Zuko gave the lemur a what am I supposed to do with this thing look before hesitantly beginning to pet it. Sokka turned forward and began lading Appa through the forest so that the other team wouldn't see him smile. With that sixth sense that Appa had to have for his airbender, it wasn't long before they heard muffled conversation between Katara, Aang, and Jet. They came into true hearing range just in time for Sokka to hear the psychotic Earth Kingdom get claim, The Fire Nation is gone, and this valley will be safe. And well, he wasn't about to waste an introduction like that. It will be safe, without you. He proclaimed proudly as Appa ambled up to the group. Sokka! Katara and Aang yelled joyously. We warned the village of your plan just in time. We? Jet asked, eyes narrowed dangerously. Zuko jumped smoothly from the saddle, landing in a practice offensive position with his eyes locked onto Jet. The two waterbenders stepped back uncertainly, but Sokka rarely let anything stop him from talking, and this wouldn't be one of those things. They didn't want to believe me at first, but they believed Zuko. They could sense his flame or something, knew he was a firebender, knew he was telling the truth. We got everyone out in time. Jet's expression turned dark, and Zuko's body tensed even further in an offensive stance. Not seeming to see the ice incapacitating the team that had imprisoned him. Sokka, you fool! You don't let this firebender poison your mind! You could have freed this valley! Who would be free? Everyone would be dead. And Zuko is just about the only person who ever spoken to you who you haven't poisoned. You traitor! Jet spat, and Zuko stepped forward. Don't talk to him like that! Sokka met Jet's eyes hard. No, Jet, you became the traitor when you stopped protecting innocent people. You've been a traitor for years, but no one's willing to say it to your face. The annoying punk had the gall to try once more, this time with Katara, who was much too smart to fall for Jet. Twice. Goodbye, Jet. Katara climbed onto Appa behind Aang. Zuko was still on the ground, hands folded into fists and eyes burning with fury. His eyes hadn't left Jet since Appa had crested the ridge. The tan teen met his eyes now, chin tilted up proudly, smugly, begging the firebender to show his true colors and beat an incapacitated man to attack his captor and abuser. Sokka swallowed thickly. Hey, buddy. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. Zuko took one step forward, toward Jet, then immediately pivoted and stalked up to Appa. He jumped forward in a single leap, just as graceful as Aang's air-assisted moves, and had just landed when Sokka called out, Yep, yep. He wasn't going to risk Zuko changing his mind, even if his instincts told him that he wouldn't. So, uh, hi, Aang said tentatively, eyeing Zuko uncertainly. I'm Aang. He held out a hand. The firebender stared at it for a few moments, as though he'd completely forgotten how normal human reaction worked. After a beat, he hesitantly took it. Zuko. Katara introduced herself as well, with Sokka watching out of the corner of his eye to make sure they played nice. His sister watched the stranger warily. So you're on Appa because... Zuko tensed, and Sokka used that moment to interrupt before the elder teen used that as a command to jump off the bison. He's the one who told me about Jet's plan, and that village only listened to me because he's been there. He's a good guy, Katara. His tone broke no room for argument. Aang... He was still somehow not as firebender-adverse as one would think a sole survivor of a genocide would be, grinned up at him. That's amazing! How did you find out about Jet's plan? How do you know Sokka? I was... Zuko's voice was soft, the raspiness inherent in it making the words almost inaudible. Sokka winced, and relished in these last few lecture-free moments before his companions found out he was complicit in keeping the team prisoner. I was Jet's prisoner. Had been for years. Sokka, he let me out. That's so cool, Sokka! Aang proclaimed. Thanks, Aang. Sokka glanced at Zuko, but the Fire Nation team quickly looked away. 
So, uh, do you have any place to go, Zuko? If not, we could definitely use a good firebender in our crew. I have no clue if we're ever going to find another one, so... Yeah! Aang said excitedly. That would be amazing, you could... If he's been a prisoner for years, he probably has people missing him. Katara interrupted, eyeing Zuko as if she could decide whether to avoid his fire or bundle him up like the mama saber-toothed lion she was inside. I... I don't know. He shook his head. I was supposed to meet my uncle on Kiyoshi Island, but I'm a few years late. He won't be waiting anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Sokka turned completely, trusting Appa to guide himself over the empty land. You're Uncle T's nephew? That would be a appropriate nickname for my uncle. Yes. Do you know him? We met him, Katara said, sounding stunned. On Kiyoshi Island. He said he, said he goes there for a few months every year, waiting for his nephew to show up. He wants to stay longer, but he said that someone would get suspicious. I can't believe you're his nephew. Aang squinted, putting his face inches from Zuko's own. Hmm, I can kind of see it. Zuko put a hand on the kid's face and pushed him away. Do you still think he's there? Katara made an expression that showed that the saber-toothed moose lion side was winning. No, I'm sorry. He said he had to go. He should come back next year, though. Oh. Zuko's shoulders fell, and he glared at his hands. But maybe you could come with us until then? He never said where he goes when he's not at Kiyoshi Island, and we're traveling all over. Maybe we'll run into someone who knows him. We've already traveled to some really cool places. Zuko listened half heartedly to the airbender, idly petting the lemur that had somehow ended up on his lap again. The younger boy had switched with Sokka as he rambled, sitting at Appa's head while Sokka made his way to join the others in the saddle. The firebender's mind was still circling around the fact that apparently Uncle was still waiting for him. He, his mind continued to wrestle with the incredible, unbelievable fact until the child mentioned Omashu. He jumped as his mind connected the name to a list lovingly compiled by his uncle and long since memorized. The airbender then began to cheerfully list the places he hoped to visit on his way to the North Pole, and Zuko swallowed thickly as he mentioned more and more places that had been on Uncle's list. The water tribe siblings began to bicker about staying on schedule, which gave him just enough time to swallow and wet his suddenly dry throat. If, he finally interrupted, if you don't mind, can I just tag along for now? Of course, yeah, definitely. Sokka said immediately, jumping in between him and Katara as if physically fighting any disagreement she might have. The girl just rolled her eyes, but her hostility had diminished significantly since hearing he was Uncle's nephew. She pulled a small bag out of her large pack. Your shirt is covered in holes. Give it here. I'll see what I can do. He did, watching her face scrunch up in annoyance when she saw that the sleeve had been cut open so he could get the shirt on without taking off the manacle. After a few moments, the passengers settled. Sokka stared at a map, Katara with her sewing, Aang at the beast's head as he steered. Zuko, Zuko just relished in the feeling of sun and wind on his skin, breathing in the fresh air. The Fire Nation team took in a deep breath and felt his chin move to the sun. Moments later, his memory of the conversation caught up with him. Wait, why are you going to the North Pole? Oh, Sokka said, scrubbing something onto a sheet of parchment. We need the benders there to teach Katara and Aang waterbending, since there aren't any benders in the South Pole. Zuko turned to the tattooed child. I thought you were an airbender. Oh, I'm the Avatar. Sorry, I probably should have started leading with that. You're what? <laughs>